I was a drama student growing up and I loved theatre and stuff. And I always loved comedy. I think it was the year when when I turned 18, I was like obsessed with like every comedian and I was like sitting there on YouTube and like watching everything. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Half a Nice Day podcast with your host, Joshua. And Janine. And today, I'm very delighted to have a very special guest in our presence. All our guests are special. Janine already knows that. (laughs) Uh, But we have with us someone who is a full Iranian, who is full Iranian, (laughs) but born and raised in the UK. She's an up-and-coming comedian. I've performed multiple times with her. She's really funny, guys. Amazing crowd work. One of the best crowd work yeah comedians i've seen here in dubai i'm very impressed by her work she's also a co-host of the spicy babies podcast along with sanya and z so please do catch that on youtube or i don't know if it's on other podcast platforms just youtube YouTube because that's where the money is (laughs) and uh, catch her on shows uh maybe you'll even see get a chance to see her with me alongside performing on dubai stages and let's give a very warm half a nice welcome to Roxy, everyone. Ooh. Welcome to the show. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. I love how you started in full Iranian. Yeah. <laughs> like, <what? laughs> we don't have these uh, full people on our podcast. That's why we're not allowed. They're not allowed into, the, into our studios. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Usually we have half in the house. But yeah. she grew up in the UK. So yes. how was that? Were you born and raised? Yeah, so UK? born and raised okay. in the UK. Okay. So, so you yeah. Your parents met there in UK? No, no, no. So they met in Iran and then basically migrated to the UK for university. And then they just kind of, the revolution happened and they were like, yeah, right. not going back. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, okay. let's leave now. <laughs> yeah, let's stay yeah. now. <laughs> okay. And how was growing up in the UK? Uh, back when I grew up, yeah, it was really nice. Mm. It was very nice. Uh, now, not so much. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> uh, With but, the latest happenings. Yes. Yeah. And it's kind of just been a downward spiral since Brexit. Yeah. But, oh, yes. uh, yeah. 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 But growing up there, it was all right. Yeah. 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 Where, it, where in the UK? Uh, so South London. Okay. So Surrey Borough. It's like uh, it's like 30 minutes to central London, basically. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you moved in to Dubai recently or a no, couple of years I've, ago? I've, yeah. been, I've actually been here longer than I've been in the UK now. So 2003? Right. 2003. Yeah. So 20, 21, 21 years. years. Oh, yeah. Wow. So my last year of high school. Okay, so it was a parent's decision to move it here. Was. Okay. Where, where did you go to high school? Oh, two random ones. So I went to one uh, in Abu Hale called Queens, mm-hmm. okay. which was a cultural, I'll tell you about that was a cultural shock because <laughs> everybody was like 90% Egyptians and nice. all hijabi ladies. Right. And it was just me and I was like, I think my parents put me in the wrong school. <laughs> Queens is not <laughs> the kind of queen you were thinking about, <laughs> mom and dad. Yes, I thought my parents thought it was like, you know, afternoon tea and scone. Yeah, and I was like, whoa. <laughs> Hello, there's monster. That's like, it's just Egyptians. <laughs> no, no offense to the Egyptian listeners, but that's a funny story. So uh, I was in Queens for a year and then uh, Cambridge, Cambridge Garhood. Okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay. Again, okay. very British. Very, yes, yeah. very British. <laughs> <laughs> That's where she met all the Indians. That's where I met all my Daisies. That's where my Daisy love started. <laughs> so how was moving from the UK high school, right? You moved yeah. in. What was that like? Um, I think because I, I made the stupid decision of... Uh, it was like mid-GCSEs. I don't know if you guys did GCSEs. Yeah, 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 we did. Yeah, so I had to drop a lot of my like favorite subjects. Like I, like, I dropped drama, I dropped German, I dropped... Religious studies, because we don't, right. those don't even have that here. Yes. Uh, and then I took up three new subjects in year 11 here. Uh, I think but like the sciences and yeah, business, yeah. like those yeah. and like a few others that I had to take up to make up my extra. Cause, so it was uh, it was interesting. And then it was just cultural shock in terms of like the people we met. Yeah. Uh, but it was fun. Yeah, it was fun. I, I can imagine as, as someone who comes in from UK, which is not so, I mean, at that time, we, we, I felt growing up in Dubai, it was very strict, you know? Yeah. There was a lot of uh, rules in terms of what you should wear, God, yeah. a lot of rules socially. Um, I'm not too sure if you have a segregated classroom where you have just boys and, and girls. Uh, I think because we were in year 11, we were mixed. Okay. So yeah. yeah. So to me, that was also, I wouldn't say, I mean, I wouldn't say a shock because I grew up here, but other way around, going back to the Philippines. Yeah. Going into college and I'm like, what is this? Yeah, because she did the op- she did not the opposite, but yeah, coming from yeah. a very strict 
upbringing and then moving on to the Philippines where every everything's like it's okay, you know. Oh, really? Yeah, it's very open. Um, y- you get to like mingle with boys and girls in the same classroom. Ooh. So I don't know, like, if for you it was quite difficult to adjust to that situation or okay. no. Ironically, in yeah. the UK, I was in an all girls school. <laughs> Okay, uh, that's an like, all girls that's school. Fine. Okay, it's like the horrendous outfits and everything. Yeah, it, the okay. uniforms. Yeah. Yes, that, they yeah. purposely do that apparently in like some parts in the UK to make it very unattractive for for men. It's it's ironic. <laughs> it's that disgusting. doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> it's very weird. I don't know. Teens. I mean, kid men in their teens are the most yeah rowdy sort of individual. So I don't think even dressing up in a in a way <laughs> wouldn't where, help. Yeah, would help. It's like, like that's a girl. Girl? Okay. <laughs> I think I love you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Dubai Dubai back then was I don't know, to me is very different to to what the kids are growing up yeah. in Dubai now. Yeah. 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 Must be now it must be like fine and dandy, but back then it was it was something else. Yeah. But I loved it because it gave us a sense of like I don't know, structure gives a sense of like no and, and the thing like i'm pretty sure you felt like this because i mean i mean not i don't know about now but when we went to the uk last year it was full brown people everywhere we went so i'm pretty sure i mean i'm i don't think it was like that like when you were growing yeah. up but like when we go there i'm like are we back in dubai or are we in <laughs> india or something like that mm. but but it must have also been a cultural shock seeing like so many different nationalities and i think that's where you get to True. to meet a lot of new people as well True. D- ironically, growing up, my two best friends, who like my childhood best friends, were uh, Indian twins. Oh, so, okay, and okay. we're still like friends till today. So, those that was like my first, like where I grew up. We had a lot of mix of like South Asian communities. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but then our neighbors were mixed. Yeah. We had like English. We had non-English. Yeah. So yeah. It was very mixed. But now, yeah, there's certain areas in the UK which is only sub Asian communities or, yeah, uh, South Asian. So bad. <laughs> I think that's where we stayed. I can't remember what the yeah. Do you remember where you went? I can't remember, but the moment we got into the Airbnb, it was like an Indian, uh, uh, uh Indian families. Yeah, was it two neighborhood and sorry, tooting? No, well, that would have been hilarious if you went to tooting. Oh, I can't remember. I don't know, but it it yeah. was we stayed in a Malayali Airbnb. Okay, yeah. and it was so, it was a great thing because they're the only one who had the shatov. We made sure whenever we find an Airbnb, we tried to get a shut off and we're like, okay. And then it, somehow it was an Indian family and they were really nice. Yeah. As if well. there's one requirement that Josh needs in an Airbnb or hotel, if there's no shut off, he's like, nope. Yeah, that's, that's the worst there. thing about yeah. Europe. Yeah. yeah. yeah my, is, we were lucky. Is. My dad, like even in the UK, he literally like broke down all the bathrooms and like put a shut off as everywhere. Yeah. Which offers and bidets, so you had to, like, either way, you, you had, had the works. <laughs> <laughs> it's like my family will not grow up having no shatafs. Yes. This is a shataf. We bring it around to them, not, <laughs> not the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> so you have a portable shataf. Yeah, I always bring a, a portable <laughs> one whenever I I travel, yeah. especially in the Europe US. For oh, sure, God, for yeah. sure. He won't be able. To we have to sure. DIY it, but now we've got a portable. Oh one yeah. As well. yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. In the Philippines, we have a DIY. It's we still use it a lot. It's called a tabo, so oh, it's like a dipper. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. And in most household households, you'll have a large sort of bucket. Bucket, which is the same one you use for your bath, by the way. So oh. <laughs> it's like this, and then you go in the toilet, and it's like. That. And you'll just leave water on there, which okay. is like uh, a pool fest of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, pull for some mosquitoes. But like you still use it, and you're like, okay, let me. Yeah. Yeah. As long as there's water. As, as long, long as there's water. There's water. Yeah. yeah, as long as it's clean. Yeah, yeah. Our butt holes sure. are all clean. Yeah. And that's one thing yeah. that we share. With then you know you're gonna client. have a good day. Yeah. Yeah. So we're always like very culturally shocked when we go to the U.S. or yeah. Europe. Or at well, least my first few times going there, because I'm like, where is the bidet? Yeah. Yeah. You keep to me. Yeah, it's the weirdest thing. Why? It's really, really weird. Yeah. And then some of them I hear, like, even if they wipe, they wipe back to front, where where I was like, no, that cannot be possible. You guys are like a superpower first world country. <laughs> and there's some things you can take from the third world, you know, like uh, like a bidet <laughs> and all these sort of things. And yeah, they out of everything. Out of boys. everything, yeah. Out of everything that they could have taken from all of their colonies why not take the good yeah i know you took your tea you took your spice just take a (laughs) a bucket of water that's the back to basics or ways of like (laughs) just cleaning yourself up but yeah i think i think more more people are getting into it by the way yeah yeah yeah, for sure for sure especially the british who come here 
Yeah. Yeah. Like even all the new comedians now, like Liz, John, they all talk about how much of a blessing it was when they first saw one over here and then compared to I think something that they really want to bring back, I think. I think it's slowly but surely. Yeah. Especially since there's a big uh, Muslim population in, in the European countries now, yeah. it's going to start happening. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Philippines doesn't even have it everywhere, by the way. Oh. Because I realize it's more of a Muslim thing, so it's more of a cleanliness oh. thing. So, but okay, okay. there was a law just recently passed last year where the mayor of Manila is mandating it in every bathroom now. So Public restroom. Yeah, public yeah. restroom, yeah. So it's now become a law. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's going to become a law, yeah. Need to have and there's an app. Okay, this is the funniest thing before we continue on the podcast. <laughs> this is just for your information if you ever go to Philippines. There's this app called Merong Bang Bidei, which translates to, is there a bidet? Oh, and hilarious. it's a Google Maps um, sort of interface where it tells you, okay, if, you want a bidet, if you're in this mall and if you want a bidet, go to the second floor, turn right. It'll give you directions because not all the bathrooms will have a bidet and it'll tell you this one. And then there's there's different like uh, out of five stars cleanliness water pressure, all those sort of things. And I'm just <laughs> in the Philippines and I'm like on Google Maps like sort of where is the closest toilet because I'm about to explode over here. That's God bless you, ever great. Yeah, I know. I made that. They're doing good. these people are doing God's work. <laughs> okay, now. Okay, now we get back yeah. to the. So, so did you do university here? Uh, so I did uni two years here and one year in the UK. No okay. science. It was the only I, English yes. one back yes. then. Yeah. Ah, okay. So yeah. Did you, your parents, are you really tried to keep with your we British did. tradition? Yeah. Queens, I don't know then. why we did. did yeah. Okay. Yeah, but we wanted like English curriculum. Okay. Yeah. And okay. when you did your last year in the UK, yes. y- you thought of not staying there. You said you're. You would come back. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Even my last year there, I was working, like I used to do telesales. So I'd, I'd go to oh. uni and then do telesales. Oh. That's, That's when my love so for cool. sales started. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, not really. I'll tell you what I did. It was very dodgy. Um, <laughs> and then after I was like, right, I'm going to go back to Dubai and like stay with my friend for a month and see if I can get a job. Mm-hmm. And I did. I came back, mm-hmm. uh, got a job and I was like, all right, I'm staying then. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... If you could, if you could live in Dubai, why not? Exactly. Taxes. Yeah. Exactly. Especially once you have a taste of Dubai, it's yeah. really hard for people to, to leave as well. Yeah. Do you have siblings or no? I do. I got one older sibling, but he moved back to the UK. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. And so he was with you here as well he when was, you. Yeah. Ah, cool. Okay. He was here, and then he got uh, married. Uh, he got married really young, actually. I think they were like 20, 24. He was oh, 24. Wow. She was twenty three. Okay. They got married, and then uh, they lived here, and then they left. I think two thousand nine. Okay. Okay. Two thousand nine. Yeah. yeah. Good time. Good time to leave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we didn't know it. Effed up the market. Now we're happy. I want to hear more about this telesales thing. Oh, oh, God. So I did two telesales jobs. One was, so I, do you guys know OSN here? Yeah. Yes. So in the UK, we have Sky TV. Yeah, okay, correct. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I used to work for this company called Skynet. Uh, Isn't we're that from Terminator? <laughs> Terminator. <laughs> it's, yeah. yeah, but we would basically do outgoing calls to people and say, we're a part of Sky TV. We're selling you your insurance for in case your satellite or anything breaks, we'll send someone over. We weren't affiliated with Sky TV. We had no affiliation. It was just a really dodgy system. But did you know? I had no idea. They just made it seem like we were affiliated. And I was like, all right, I paid amazingly well for like back then. You'd get, I think... For back then, how old was I? I was like 21. It was like 11 pounds an hour plus wow. commission. But it was wow. like, it was the most cutthroat job ever. Like if you didn't do your 11 a day, by the end of the day, they would be like, get packing. Oh, yeah. Okay. So it was okay. very interesting. So it, we used to do that. And there was this, I'll never forget this one guy next to me. Uh, it was this short, I think Sri Lankan guy. Sri Lankan guy he sat next to me. This guy was a machine. He would, call, and it was really bad because like most of the people that we would sign up were like these older elderly people. I know, and I think that's like my worst karma in life is from this one telesales yeah. job. Uh, and we would call and we'd be like, it's uh, ending, so I need to confirm your credit card details so I can put you through the system. And then he had obviously figured out that all, all visas start with four or five and then whatever it be, yeah. and all MasterCard yeah, yeah, start correct, with. Yeah. So he'd be like, okay, I'm going to say the first few digits and then you finish it, okay? Whatever their name was. And then he'd be like four or five, and then whatever they would say, he would quickly input it into the oh, system. Oh, wow. Oh, it was a, this guy was a machine. He would get like 12, 13 sales a day. That's insane. Wow. So he got his commission. Oh, yeah, he got his commission. Wow. And now we're in hell. But <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be paying for it for the rest of your life. But, okay. <laughs> no, but as a college student, 
by having that's that really much. Good money, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's that was really thing. good money back then. Yeah. So uh, we had, I was doing that, and then I think, I think I did that for about four or five months, and then I, I moved closer to where uni was, and it was a BT call center, so similar to do. That was just incoming. It was okay, like people okay, okay. Having, people's that, that was less uh, dodgy, okay, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it was less dodgy. It was really <laughs> helping people yes. out. <laughs> yeah. Helping them with the tended communication. Yeah. <laughs> Not asking for their credit oh, card. God, no, thank God. <laughs> but I do say if anyone ever wants to like upskill their sales, you've got to work in telly. I was just going to say, I think, yeah. you know, it's really bad because nowadays you get a lot of calls from banks as well saying, you know. Real estate, everything. Real estate, yeah. I don't know. Um, they will even call you to invest. And Twitter. as soon as you see, sometimes you don't even answer that call. And yep. when you answer, you probably give them three seconds. Who are you? No, not interested. And yep. then end it. So I don't know if it's much more difficult to do it now because it's I think so. a lot more. It's I happening so. more rampant than how yeah. it was. But I always have the utmost respect for tough salespeople. Like, I think man. So. I think patience wise, like, woo, it's them and customer service. Yes. Customer yeah. service, you have to have the patience of the same. Oh gosh! Yeah. Like, even if you're the nicest person, you take your you take your thing out on customer service people in this country. You're like, yeah. my food was five minutes late. Yeah, How dare you? <laughs> We're so spoiled. Yeah. We really are. Yeah. We it, really, really yeah. are. And would you say those two jobs really helped you like gain a lot of? I would say, skills. Yes. Yeah. Because I've I've like biggest chunk of my work has always been in sales and business development, so I would definitely say it it came from there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's a good foundation. It was a good foundation <laughs> from a very dodgy place, but yeah. a good foundation. <laughs> uh, yeah. Definitely. And from a young age. Yeah. 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 And, oh, and then when I was here, I was doing promo work. You remember promo? Oh work yes. Back in the day. Yes. Yeah, we, I was doing promo work from like sixteen, seventeen. Even yeah. though you weren't supposed to until eighteen, but I was. Yeah. But everyone did. It. Yeah. 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 Even I started off with promo work. Everyone got excited for GTEx. Oh, and God, you know, all those sort of so things. Well. Yeah. They paid really well. Yeah. yeah. It'd be like four days and you get like 10K or something. It's yeah. Insane. I know one guy who worked for a PlayStation. So he literally just had to play PlayStation. Then yeah. I got a PlayStation gig as well. Yeah. And it was the best. I'm just playing, making friends with kids. <laughs> They'll all call me uncle, uncle. Can yeah. I play oh, now? I then? was like 16. No. <laughs> 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 I, I, I aged very poorly, by the way. Puberty hit me in a very bad way and now i'm okay but <laughs> if she sees if you if you see a few of my pictures when i was 16 17 you'll be like this guy's like 40 years old really yeah true i started graying in high school oh I was, my, yeah. i'm all gray yeah so <laughs> all gray. so it, it's it was really crazy like yeah. and growing up and their uncle can i play now i'm like oh, i'm okay yeah sure so N now i love it he's my brown george P. i used to dye i used to, i used to dye my hair at 17 my sister i would make her dye my hair at 17 yeah. When did you start getting? So I started getting it when I was thirteen and not fifteen. My mom started dyeing my hair and it oh, really? get started getting oh. worse and worse. Uh, oh yeah, I've had every really color on For me, I think I started at sixteen. <laughs> sixteen, really? yeah. I mean, I love this. The salt and pepper on guys looks amazing. Yeah, it's so much on us, right? Girls. We can't pull it off. For, for women, you're like, oh, I have to dye my yep, hair. Yeah, I gotta do my roots. It's not acceptable. Yeah. 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 But yeah. Yeah. I I really hated it. I because I didn't. I I was always made fun of. Like, why do you have like? gray hair at 16 or just doing math exams <laughs> or something it's like you, like you you look like you have loans to pay to your banks and everything. i'm like oh, that's you so took it out of me but he is stressing him yeah i know you Algebra. go home to your parents yeah it was actually i lost my calculator and i had to do an exam <laughs> and the world's crumbling down oh gosh <laughs> i wanted to uh um, sure. i wanted to ask because uh, I just I was looking at your videos yeah. and then I realized that your husband is Indian. Yeah. So how how did you guys meet? Oh yeah. Uh, so we met here. Yeah. Obviously. Uh, yes. We, uh, <laughs> uh, we met here about a decade ago, and it was via one of our mutual friends. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, how did it happen? Okay, you want the long story or his version? His version is we met through friends. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's it. That's the end. Of it. Your story. Your uh, version. my story. <laughs> now give me my version. So I was working, ironically, back then in real estate, mm -hmm. and I had a friend called Catherine, and uh, well, I still have her. She's still around. She's still alive. <laughs> May she rest in peace, guys. <laughs> um, and she kept saying, she's like, oh, I really want to introduce you to this guy. I think you guys, I'm like, I'm not interested. I don't want to meet a guy. I don't want a date. Not interested in a blind date at all. Uh, and she kept going on about it for like a month, and then she finally gave up. And then one day she was like, oh, is it okay if you drop me to Mall of the Emirates after work? I was like, yeah, sure. So I went to Mall of the Emirates, whatever. We met one of her friends and we were sitting in the upstairs food court. You know, the one that used to be in, mm. we're well, still there. We're yes. Shake Shack and all that nonsense. Yes. Uh, and this, I saw this guy start walking towards her. I'm like, oh, Catherine, look at that guy. He's so cute. 
And she looked at me in the most sassy way. And she was like, that's the guy I was going to introduce you to. Mm. See? Just listen to me. I was like, well, how about next time you show a fuck? <laughs> well, I know. We live in a digital age. <laughs> that's true. So that was it. He came, he sat down. Uh, we, I think we were both like really fancied each other. And then the next day he just asked me out on a date and that was it. Oh, wow. That is yeah. really cute. And my man, on the first date, he'd already planned our third, fourth, and fifth day. And I'm like, relax, sir. Oh, <laughs> relax, I sir. The jury's still yeah. out. <laughs> it's like yeah. love at first sight. It was. It was yeah. definitely lust at first sight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about love. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And that's 10 years ago. That was 10 years ago, yeah. And where did you get married? In... Oh, wow. Oh. Is he Hindu? So he is Hindu, yeah. So oh. that was like a big thing because on paper I'm obviously Muslim, yeah. Although not oh, practicing. Yes, correct, so, correct. Yeah. That was the biggest pill for his parents to to. to I was just going to ask, how was yeah. it with your families? So my mum, I think the first person from my family I let meet in was my mum, and that was like a year into us dating. Okay. Um, and then because I had a really bad experience. So before, uh, my my husband, I had dated an Indian guy before. And like, it, it was just like the worst relationship ever because it was like six months of intensity. And then at the end, he's like, my parents are never going to accept you. So bye. <laughs> oh, I was no. like, oh, my God. That, that, that happens a lot, right? No, it happens yeah. a lot, especially when there's um, a Hindu and Muslim involved. Right. Mm. Yeah. That's the, that's the hardest way to. Because that's the thing where I'm like, yeah, she like when I was working in my old company, when someone got married to. He was Hindu and she's Muslim. Everyone like there were the talk of the town. Like, how is that happening? Really? Yeah. Why is there? Why are they even letting it happen? It should not happen yeah. at all because it's mm. like the biggest. I don't want to say taboo. rivalry, but yeah, taboo. taboo yeah. yeah. Taboo. Yeah. So. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it was very strange. Yeah. But yeah, so f- for my parents, they knew about him within the first year, and then like it was three years in, and I was like, your parents don't know I exist. He's like, yeah, because the day my parents meet you, that's it. We're getting married, and I'm like, I thought he was just being like dramatic. Yeah. He was not. <laughs> at year four his parents found out about me they're like okay first they ignored him for a month they like they were like are oh, we gonna yeah, cut this yeah, boy yeah. off or we yeah. do yeah and then they came around they're like okay we're coming to dubai to meet this girl okay and that was it it was the most awkward interview <laughs> i wouldn't even call it a meeting it was an interview oh i can imagine yeah oh wow it was it was not fun <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah. I, I can imagine it must be super even when the first time i met her dad my god i'll tell you I'll t- i've spoken about it multiple times but i can tell you in a separate story but oh, I'd love it was the it. most it was an interview as well it was an interview yeah, yeah. is your dad the arab one yes my dad's oh. lebanese that's why and he's so a, is he strict really oh yeah, yeah. he's a lebanese who's six foot has a bullet shot wound he's what? massive he served in the war like, sermon right. vietnam something <laughs> <worse. Wait a minute. laughs> one of the one of uprisings yeah. yeah yeah but he's like a very strict guy you see him you'll like i feel so he's small intimidating in front of huh? super intimidating yeah. you gotta show me for a lady yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah but I, br- I briefed you like yeah she briefed i did you. not exaggerate like yeah. i gave you all of the details yeah. she gave me the, yeah. the nitty-gritty in the beginning so. was he cool with you guys there no really not at first no How i got i got my first I don't know if you listened to the podcast, but I got my first hug from him on the wedding day itself. So Aww. that was, yeah. And that was the only thing I want. I'm like, I don't care if I'm marrying your daughter. I don't care if all my closest friends and family are here. I just want, I just want her dad's hug. Yeah. Like that's the only thing. That was his wish. That was his yeah. wish. I just want a hug. And him. everyone knew after that, after the wedding, like literally in the night, like, did you get the hug by the way? You got the hug? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I got the hug. And most of, most of the like people around, when they saw the hug, they were like, he's the yeah, he got the hug. Got the hug. Yeah, so yeah, that was the only thing that I remember. Was it a good yeah. hug? It was a good hug. Yeah. It was some good people hug. are good huggers. When they give you yeah. a hug, you're like, oh, yeah. oh that's my dad. Hug, Aww. and then he had this, some of his tears on my jacket. I'm Aww. like, this is this is the way. Now we're getting married. <laughs> <laughs> now I can get married to your daughter. That was it. That, that was that was what I was looking for. Yeah, it's tough when you um when you come into a multicultural plus multi belief religion whatever it is relationship yeah um, especially with our the generation of our parents they're still a lot more i would say strict or a lot more like old school like, sort of thinking school. right like yeah. yeah i'm assuming now the, the, the next few generations we're gonna have a little bit more flexibility when it comes to oh what are your beliefs or your religion it's more so are you a good person yeah. are you you know how how did you grow up where did you grow up instead of like what is your religion is yeah what is your faith what is all yeah. the thing yeah yeah, yeah so it's opening up a lot yeah. now yeah so there's so many mixed race couples 
Yeah. So many mixed race kids now. Yeah. yeah so it's, it's the future. Yeah. The future. Yeah. We're we're gonna be taking over yeah. the world for yeah. sure. All of these third culture and all of these like mixed kids from wherever yeah. they are. Yeah. 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 I love that story. I love that your friend knew that you guys would click. I know. It yeah. was, it's very strange because we're complete opposite. Right. If you mean us, we're I think also that's probably why it works. Yeah. Very. I met him only once, I think. Did you meet him? Yeah, I met him once. Probably at the, did you come to our 30? Because he only comes to, everyone's like, why is your husband not here? I'm like, how your, your spouse gets sick of seeing your same set over and over again. That's me. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm like, it's, it's. Yeah. I, I think it, uh, uh, the clavichord was one of the first times I ever met him. One of the one of the comedy shows when you were really fresh into comedy, probably yeah, because yeah, you would yeah, be yeah, like, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm married to an Indian, he's here in the audience, and then you pointed him out. I'm like, oh, okay, he's here. Oh, okay. So I, okay. I, something like that, if I remember, but okay. like super long time ago, I can't okay. even remember his face at this point. But it's very tall, like it's, it's yeah, 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 yeah. Now I remember. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. I'll probably see, and and I haven't even seen you. The thing is, every time he has a show, and now you do what two to. Th- Three times a week? Yeah, two to three times a week. Just like, I can't, I cannot keep up. I feel like Josh goes through phases though. Sometimes he's like oh, yeah. on every scene and then sometimes you're like, and then Josh he disappears. Yeah. Right? And I'll, t- I'll like, tell you the reason why you'll, you'll feel this when we start talking to the, your, your co- comedy yeah. and everything about And it. that's what I wanted to get into. W- what made you get into comedy? Ooh, yeah. That's a good one. Uh, t- t- to be honest, so I've always, one of my favorite subjects that I said I dropped was drama. So I was a, I was a drama student growing up and I loved theater and stuff. And I always loved comedy. I think it was the year when, when I turned 18, I was like obsessed with like every comedian. And I was like sitting there on YouTube and like watching everything from like Eddie Murphy's Raw till like. Oh, okay, okay. I think Joe Coy had just come out then. Yeah. So his orange chicken thing was like one of my favorites. Okay. I was like, oh, I love this guy's style. So I think that year I was like, oh, I'm going to go to the UK because we used to go to the UK every summer. And I was like, I'm going to do an open mic. And we went and I couldn't find an open mic. And being an 18 year old, I probably forgot about it or did something else. Mm -hmm. And then uh, then I came back to the UAE after uni and I started probably like a couple of years after I would go and watch all the stand ups here. And I don't know why it never occurred to me that why don't I try an open mic here? Yeah. Uh, and I, you know, T-Bone. Yeah. So I, I me and I really liked T-Bone and we used to watch him a lot. And then one time he posted that he was doing a one day workshop or something. Oh yeah. I went yeah. through that as well. Yeah. yeah. One day full intensive. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, and then I messaged going, can I? And he was, I was like, oh, but I've, I've never done comedy. He's like, that's exactly who it's for. He's did like, you know him or did you just watch him? Just watched him in like okay. high by kind of okay. situation. And then, uh, yeah, we did, we did the one day workshop. He gave us like a bunch of homework to do beforehand. And in that one day, we did like, I, got, I had a five minute set. I mean, a lot of that jokes wow. have been completely retired. Okay, now, okay, okay, like okay, okay. Changed, okay. But it's like, it was like a five minute set. And the next day, we performed at PUBG 2. Wait, which one's the PUBG that was in Barsha and now it's moved? In Barsha? Yeah, it's in like. Yeah, PUBG, it was PUBG 1. PUBG, that was PUBG 1. 1, yeah. Okay, yeah, so we did an open mic there. And then I was like, oh, I love this. You did well your first time? I did. I oh, remember wow. Eva got up and she was like, she's lying. This ain't her first time. And I was like, no, nah, it's your first time. I love that. Uh, and that was it. And then uh, it was a great audience as well. And okay, then, uh, okay. Yeah, and then so you uh, got that I rush. You're like, I, I got the this. rush. I was like, oh, I yeah. love the stage time. And that was it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, and loving drama, it's also, you know, the stage time. It's also mm-hmm. interacting with your audience. It's also... So for sure, if you love drama, then yes. naturally you're also going to love comedy. No, drama is a very big part of comedy, which people don't realize. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's, it's one of the key foundations of comedy. Yeah. So I could see why a lot of theater acts or like yeah. drama acts would love to get into comedy yep. at s- some point or the other. They don't really enjoy it as much as they do, but it's like a like a stepping stone, you know? It so it is. Yeah. yeah. Prefer- I think I prefer com- sorry. I no, prefer no, comedy ahead. than theater now. Right. Yeah. But I haven't done theater in years as well, so Yeah. It's, it's been a while. Yeah. Do, do you want to I would love to. Yeah, yeah. I keep saying like maybe I'll perform for the I'll uh, what do you call audition for the next short and sweet, but yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Sadik does it as well. Sadik did. Theater. You watched his. Um, we went. We went. Ice Hole, right? Friday. Friday. Yeah. I really want to go. I don't know if it's still showing, but I need to. Oh no! Yesterday was yesterday or today is the last one. Oh, if you okay. can go, honestly, like I, I won't lie. Even to them, I was, I was telling Sahar before the show. I'm like, I'm really not gonna do. It's <laughs> gonna be really awkward because I'm like three shows, three rows in. <laughs> uh, I was like, how the hell do I pretend like I'm gonna leave? I went to the washroom. <laughs> um, but I was like, because I think I went in as like a complete skeptic. And honestly, it is like nothing you've seen before. Okay. Right. It was so good. 
Okay. So, so good. I would recommend it if you can go watch it. Go I, I would like to try to, yeah. Have to see it. yeah. I like Sadiq a lot. He's he's a very nice guy. He does support me a lot as well in oh, comedy. Nice. Yeah, so yeah. I, it's, That's it's what you guys nice need here me. because, I mean, now it's a growing community, right? But when the first few times that I've seen you, the community was so small and it was... I, I would already know everyone else's set the yeah. next time I saw them yeah. again. Yeah. But now, like, I can It's like hard to bring it to shows because she already ha- Like, she knows all the old school comedians, like, oh. all the OGs and stuff. She hasn't seen a lot of new ones, like you. Uh, she just recently I saw, like, too. a few people. Yeah. Her favorite, though, is Salman. She really likes Salman. Oh, I like Salman. Salman's funny. Butterfly guy. Yeah. I yeah. love him. Um, the flowers. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Yeah, the flowers. Not butterfly. Yeah, the flower guy. Yeah. I was like, maybe in Philippines. <laughs> <laughs> Butterflies in the Philippines, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But uh, something that we spoke about earlier, which I want to get back into, because um, as comedians, like we see, when we watch comedians, we're like, oh, why didn't I think of that premise? Why didn't I think of that that sort of joke? Especially it fits into my set so well. Yeah. So I was writing this joke about Jenny and I, because we just got married, and now we're talking about having kids. Yes. And I'm like, I don't know how our kids will look like. It's definitely going to be hairy. (laughs) And you know what what joke I'm going to do? And I'm like... And definitely gonna end up in um, as a barber or something like that okay. because Lebanese are known for their hairstylists. They really Filipinos. are, by the way. Yeah. The best hairstylists. And Filipino yeah. barbers are also top notch. That's also true. And then you come on stage, the first time I ever saw you, and you do this joke. I don't know if I should say it or if you want me to cut I'll it. Go for it, go for it. Yeah, so she has this joke where, like, uh, her husband is Indian, I'm Iranian. Can you imagine the baby on that hair? And I burst out laughing. I'm like, that is the perfect joke for a Filipino, uh, sorry, a Fil- uh, sorry, an Indian and Lebanese child. <laughs> that is so Because I'm like, I should have thought of that, but I couldn't think of that. So I, I immediately knew like, oh, that's such a great joke. Yeah. I wish I had it. Yeah. But then, of course, it's yours. And so good. It's, oh, such, a, it's good. such a great joke. And I think I it's like one of the one. first jokes you had. Or I That think, was one of the, yeah. yeah that was in, like, that was actually in that first five minute set that's uh, on that stage. Okay, yeah. okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I like that one joke actually. Yeah. yeah. So it's funny because that's one of the jokes that not always lands, by the way. Really? Oh, really? Sometimes you have to explain it because sometimes, I don't know if you've seen it in some rooms, I go, don't be fooled. I shaved for you guys. Yeah, yeah, that's how you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To continue to it. To continue on, yeah. it, yeah. yeah. Because yeah. some people are just like, huh? Yeah. <laughs> to explain the joke. Yeah, to yeah. explain yeah. the joke. Yeah. I wanted to um, talk about because like I'm I'm looking at your reels and your stage. Stalking presence. you today, yeah. Yeah, I stalked you <laughs> a lot today. So if you see all of those likes, that's all me. <laughs> I'm gonna stalk you later. Don't yeah. you worry. <laughs> but I love your stage presence, oh, and what I love you. most is how you do crowd work. Oh, I love crowd. Work. That's and and I want to talk about it more. Like I've seen one where there was a he- heckler. And oh, the British guy. British guy. Oh yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. And um, I just wanted to ask you, how do you think? Of how to get back to these hecklers, like um, what? What do you, is there? Is there something that you practice? Do you do more improv? I don't know. Or but, or or to to add to that, if, yeah. Um, also as well, because there's different ways of handling hecklers. They say the best one is just bring them back to reality. Don't make them uh, an enemy. Make them a friend. Yeah. And then continue on your show. Yeah. So yeah, I'll, I love how she handles. Yeah, well, I I don't know if I remember seeing that or something, but it was a first. You asked him his name, right? And he oh said, yes, and Mr. he said Smith. Mr. Smith. Yeah, and you're just like you look more like a Mrs. Smith. Yeah, <laughs> and then I think that triggered him. Or he something. did. He got really angry. Oh, uh, he didn't actually though. He was just trying to. Yes, they were just three really rowdy British guys who. And everyone thinks they're a comedian at yes. some point of the show. Yeah. yeah, but it was stables, and you know how stables is. Stables oh. is like forty percent like yes. b- people there for comedy, sixty percent regulars. Yeah, after office drinks, yes. that's the yeah. that's the crowd. I just want to drink. Yeah. And yeah. these guys were just drinking. They did not. I think there was like two acts or three acts before me, and they were just talking over everyone. So I was like, I'm going to address them the moment I get on stage because they're, otherwise they're not going to shut up. And Ema was like, don't address them too much because don't want to give them too much attention. Yeah, she's yeah. Like, <laughs> like that. she was like, I was like, but either way, they're going to be talking. So yeah. I think that was it. And then I think I, I think I made a joke about him not having a penis. Yes. <laughs> yes. But it, w- it was because it tied into my first joke about a, a Persian rug. Which, right. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Um, I think that was it. And then I just made a joke about being British Iranian to, to take it back to, to being British. But I don't know, there's no way, there's no, it's not like a cookie cutter fit of like yeah. every person. And I think 
uh, some comedians are really scared of crowd work. I don't do crowd work. Yeah, Josh doesn't do crowd work. <laughs> <laughs> it and, I, I, and I always encourage him, I'm like, just try it once or like twice. Like, yeah. do, like do something. He used to do his tattoo yeah. one, which I love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all the time I'm like, do it. Yeah, but he hasn't done it for yeah. a while. No, because now I'm, I'm working on newer stuff. So yeah. I try to end it with a different joke, but... I, that when I do longer sets, because no one gives me like fifteen minutes or or more other than Ima and a few other people. So really? yeah, oh. uh, no, no, I'll, okay. <laughs> but but Josh is one of my faves, so I'm like, oh, I'm oh, thank, about, you, like thank yeah. you, thank you. But yeah, I also for me, I'm I'm I get uncomfortable doing longer sets. Okay, I have a solid five, which yeah. I like to do. But of course, like I like to do like ten to twelve. That's my sweet spot where I think, but. I, I lately I've been doing like for Abu Dhabi Fest, I've been doing 20, 25, which I'm impressed as well that I can actually do that much time without. <laughs> if I do say yeah. so much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I was like, wow. I, I was just looking at my thumb Aww. like, where did he go, Josh? Yeah. He yeah. definitely has the content. I've seen Josh like a million times and he always does. Like, yeah. I really liked your new joke, where, which everyone else was like, oh, we made, we got really sad. I'm like, no, but that's where the funny was. Then he was so now my, my, yeah. my Instagram is just going to be my. I, so. Just to keep me on my toes and keep me writing, I'm going to write a new joke for every time I perform. Oh, I like This that. joke is with the intention to get chuckles, but not roaring laughters. But for the most part, like a bomb, like a, so a sort of a funny bomb. I uh, saw your dog I one today. I couldn't stop around. <laughs> I was he was like, oh, nobody got that? Okay, bye. <laughs> that was my closer, by the way. And I got off stage. I called him the whole stage. And I took it and I said, <laughs> So, so I have a ton of these now ready. I'm going to start posting like once a week. Just just my bombing bits. Because everyone that. posts like uh, like really good work, really yeah. good uh, times where they where they performed. I would love to post crowd work if I did crowd work, but I can't. Uh, so I'm just doing one joke, which I'm just going to do then and there. Never again. Yeah. Doesn't fit into my set like a one-liner. And he sends them to me sometimes. Like I'm at work. And he sends them to me. I'm like, this is so bad. And he's like, that is the goal. <laughs> And I'm like, are you really going to do it? He's like, yes. I'm like, you it's actually it. hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. I like it because it's so different. He's it's right. Different, All of us yeah. go through like our hours of material to be like, okay, this one is really yeah. funny. Yeah. Yes. Whereas like, that's hilarious. And so, he's so like, it's a one bomb wonder. Yeah. Instead of one, one bomb it's wonder. wonder. I like that. I like that. And there's this guy who came to me after a show. Uh, what, one of the f times we performed together in Double Decker, I don't know if you remember this night. Um, there was this. Was that the first time Denise performed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, correct. Yeah, so this that. doctor came. He's like, uh, not to not to toot my own horn, but he's like you were the funniest comedian tonight. Aww. I really loved you. Then he comments on one of the the last video I put out. And he's like, "What happened to your comedy, bro?" Oh, uh, that's him. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. So and I, I felt bad at the same time, but I'm like, he doesn't know like he what is what he is my my <laughs> my thinking of this as well. Yeah. And something I also want to do. If there's a joke that I write which I really like, I want to do it in a way where like okay this is the first time i did this joke where it bombed and this is where it is now and where it gets a huge oh, I think that would so be great. it's the progression of a joke because people don't understand how much time like even one word can really change um the the flow of a joke the laughter so of it much. so so i want people to see that they think yeah. oh, this guy just comes out on stage or these comedians just make it look so easy but in reality i think that's one, one problem with thing. like newcomers as well they get on stage and I think a common thing is like they think because you're funny with your friends or like you're the clown uh, of the group, you're yes. going to get on stage and just be funny. Yes. Whereas I'm like, you don't realize there's a process. Oh. We've got to write like 20 times. you got to perform it. We don't have enough open mics, by the way. Producers, we don't have enough. Open yeah. Mics. Open mics is a is scarcity. Everyone yeah. has a curated show. But yeah. yeah. So it's like, but then the amount of times you trial and test it. And then he's right. It's like one joke I used to do back in the day. I didn't get any laughs. Now I do it complete. It's the same thing, same verbiage, but like maybe one word different, and I act it. Ah, yes. So it makes such a difference. Yes. Yeah. And like you, you only know that either when you've done a hundred shows, when you keep doing it differently, or open mics. Yeah. And you and you such a actually process. learn how your audience reacts to it. Is it the first part? Is it the second part? The middle or whatever. Yeah. And so I, I I try to act as Josh's ears when the little times that I go and actually listen to his. Is open mics. I'd like to tell him like, okay, here you got a lot of laughter. So like, yeah. try to try to yeah. work on that a little bit more. Yeah. But gosh, I'm so impressed with you guys because you could never put me on stage and do that. <laughs> I would be embarrassed if no one laughed at my jokes. But you guys like take it as a champ if actually no one mm. the jokes. I, I, I like I like bombing. That. Yeah, in a way because 
that's where everyone says that's where they see the real me. Like, because for me, I always try to put in like some stupid lines here and there. And that usually gets ignored or brushed under and like people really don't laugh. But there's something to bombing where you realize like, okay, it definitely have to, I definitely have to work harder in this joke. Especially if a joke you're very stubborn about like, okay, the audience doesn't get it now, but wait till I refresh it until yeah. I refine it. Then it's, yeah. then that's the beauty for me when it comes to comedy as well. Yeah. Because yeah. What, what, what you said is so true, like, like where you say... There's some guys who are like so funny in front of their friends. Yeah. yeah, they're the class clown. They grew up very funny, very mm -hmm. popular. The moment they get on stage, it doesn't do. it doesn't yeah. translate. Yeah, because mm -hmm. like uh, there was this guy on the on the podcast who talked about, yeah, you could be funny with your friends because they know the they know the premise. Yes, uh, they know who you are as a person. But when you go on stage, you have to really like spell it out for them. Like you have to tell them the real premise. Oh, so am I? You know my friend Roxy. Like all, all the friends know her already, so uh, they already have her, yeah. you and their story. But now you're coming on a, as a fresh face, and they don't like, okay, what's he talking about? Mm, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. A lot of fresh faces are doing that, and yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm, I and we lately have started being very, um, uh, like, oh, what is the word that I'm looking for? Like very truthful with feedback. Because now it, I used to say, tell this a lot to people. Oh, you did it so well today. Yeah. Even if they bombed and yeah. ate butt on stage. Ate butt. Yeah, but now but now you you really have to start giving them honest feedback. Like, where is yeah. your... You have to get your joke out in 10 seconds. Yeah. You have to have a strong opener, strong closer. All this, all the yeah. very basic stuff, which uh, people take for granted. Yeah. But you need to really just give them the straightforward um, feedback. Or if they ask for it, yeah, give it to them. Don't say, oh, you did well. Oh, you can just rewrite it. But try to be a little bit more specific. So Yeah, but you guys understand each other. And who else would give the best feedback to one another yeah. than you yeah. guys? Yeah. That's why I appreciate comics who did courses or like a, understood the basics like you, like whoever done the Womendi or Ema's classes or something like that. Because... They really took time to understand. Oh, there's a, it's a science. There's a setup. There's a premise. There's yes. a punchline. There's a tag. Mm -hmm. There's an act out. There's, yep. Yeah, something stuff. And as you said, it takes a lot of like these open mics and testings and all that. Yeah. Um, but on the flip side as well, if it for you, if a joke doesn't like, when do you know to drop a joke? And is it That's true? Is it hard to let go of a joke for it you? Is. Yeah, it is because this is one joke I really like. I don't think you ever heard my Objectophilia one. No, I, was, it was, I love this show yeah. so much, and I did it. I think a total of three times, including an open mic, and it worked twice. And the third time, or maybe it worked once, and the two other times it just it went flat. And I was just like, and this is one of those jokes where I, I've dropped it, but now I'm just like, I need to revive it. I still think there's something there. Yeah, do it, do it. Yeah, do and it. that's like, yeah, if it worked once, that means there's something there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. something there. Oh. Park, park it and and work on it yeah. later. Not like I'm some super genius no, no, but or exactly. anything, but yeah. But it was a, one of my first jokes ever that I ever performed. Like within six months of doing comedy, I dropped it because I wasn't getting laughs. I went on a roast battle oh. with Anand, and Anand had the perfect roast. And then while he was roasting me, it just clicked in my mind. Like I literally on stage, and if there was a video of it, I'm pretty sure I'm be like, huh. That would fit in my set really well. Like while he's literally mid roasting me, audience <laughs> like, oh, and I'm just looking like that would fit in my set. So I, after the show, I spoke to him like, that roast you gave on me. Can I add it to my bit? Yeah. You gave me full permission and That's and so uh, yeah. So it, it's there's sometimes where you just click or sometimes someone says yeah. something when you're just having a conversation and it just I'm like, oh yeah, that can be added to it. Yeah. yeah? As an outsider, I'm very curious. Do you guys get like bad blood with one another if you steal each other's joke? Not steal, but like, hey, that's close to my joke. Do you guys get you... protective with? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you you can take this question. <laughs> so I've never had that done, but I know uh, people are very touchy on premises here. Yeah, uh, but I also think it's very unfair because, like, not just UAE. Like, we all have like similar. The whole good thing is like, if you're a good comic, yeah some joke I may, my, may make might be so relatable to someone in a completely different country or yeah. continent that they're like, oh, sorry, that, like, I think that that's a planned been, slide. That's okay. Your, <laughs> that could have been, you know, yeah. mine. But like, uh, for me, I wouldn't mind because I think right. each joke, like remember when the Stephen Hawking thing happened for uh, Epstein's Island? Yeah. yeah. I think that one week, all of us did an Epstein. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, it's bound yeah. to happen. It's yeah. uh, But it's a topical joke. Like it'll happen and then you'll park it and never do yeah. it again. Yeah, with um, COVID, everyone was talking about COVID, yes. for example. Everyone now yes. has a, yeah. uh, 
I, I mean, not here so much, but I know a few comedians have already started doing that. The Hawk Twa girl. Oh, yeah. Yes. Everyone yes. like so now that's like I know like all the or whoever comedians I follow on Instagram. If you see their reels, they're like everyone has like a Hawk Twa. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I didn't even know about this by the way until like last week. Even her. Like, yeah, what is the Hawk Twa girl? I kept seeing it yeah. in an ad too. I'm like, what is that me? And so like, yeah, thanks for to me, and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> And now she's like super famous. She's just telling me she so crazy. trademarked or copyrighted. You know she's the trademarking term. the term now, hawk twa. How can you yeah. trademark hawk twa? Yeah. She's gone on um she's she's been brought up on stage by country singers in arenas <laughs> to do to hawk sing twa. no no to sing to sing songs as apparently she's also a singer. Oh. Oh, she's being brought on stage. Um she's she just posted a video like don't buy any merch that is not um, sold by me. I'm working on selling my own merch, so keep it busy. Uh, oh my if you're supporting God. other merch people, that money doesn't go to me, guys. So just be patient. I'm already working on merch, and then she shows a preview of a hat that she's working on. It's insane. I'm like, can you imagine? Like, yeah, good on her. Insane. Good on her for capitalizing on yeah, the. I don't know, man. It's such a social media <laughs> game now. Like, generations it, missed. It. Yeah. Yeah. I saw. A, I didn't see any of uh, like people doing jokes, but I saw a podcast of. Uh, Playgren? Oh, Andrew okay. Schultz? Who? Andrew Schultz? No, no, no. It was, um, he's an Arab American. Fahim Anwar? Ah, yeah, Fahim, Fahim Anwar. He did one about the heart. He was like, uh, he was like, this is the problem of our generation. He's like, I've been a comic. I've got like 700,000 followers. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your he does this. Yeah, yeah. girl has got like 250,000 followers yeah. just for doing and it's true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it so just it, takes one moment, the right moment, the right time, the right whatever you say or do, and it gets you. But then it's what you do after as well. True. You know, those 15 Capitali seconds. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Capitalizing on your 15 yeah. seconds. It can it can just go away very quickly. But if you're smart, like what she's doing, good on her. She's getting on podcasts. Yeah. She has her merch. And everyone's talking about her. And what? It's been one, two, three weeks now, probably. Yeah, around that. that. Time, and yeah. yeah, as you said, she's being brought onto stage. Yeah, bringing out to arena shows yeah. with country music star she sings her so songs yeah. now like so she was a singer before yeah apparently she's a like she's a really midwest girl like cowboy sort of thing so she's like one of those yeah, yeah. she looked cowboy yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah but but i can also understand like as a very hard working content creator that can also be like very discouraging that yeah. someone just gets uh, their 15 seconds of fame and then they run with it while other people have been doing it for years and years producing millions of content or yeah. still struggling to get yeah. the amount of it's followers. a frustration of being um an artist as well right like especially when uh but uh, like there's two different things there's one is jealousy and one is envy yeah. so like uh jealousy is like okay i'm jealous of this person for no reason whatsoever i don't even want what they have like yeah. like a lot of people like it's more envy where you're like i can do this i need to work harder this is what I want. So at least I know what I want and I know what is the direction yeah. to, to take as well. Yeah. So you post your, your crowd work, what, once a week or how does it work? Uh, it depends. Like right now I've got like loads of, I'm, I'm so bad at editing. I'm so bad at editing. Like there's so much. I'm like, oh, I need to make this. And then I just look at it. And I'm like, I have no idea how to do it. Like I'm taking uh -huh. forever. Okay. Yeah. 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 So you, when you when you talk about content creators, it's not easy. Yeah, it's not it? easy. It is not easy. I'd honestly, take props off to you if you yeah. can do it as often as you can. But like, yeah, I try to do at least one a week. Okay. That's good. Post yeah. one a week. Yeah. yeah. And you just like hope and pray, you know, like where, like this is the one that really blows up or sets yeah. you apart from everyone. Because it happens. I, the, the thing that I've realized about all these people who recently blew up in our community yeah. is consistency. Yes. Like, uh, like Anand, huge shout out to him. Ever since I knew the guy, met him in 2019, he's always told me he wanted to make it big on social media. He's done animations. Good he's him. done street interviews. He's done uh, podcasting, solo Same. podcasting, uh, reaction videos, everything. You know, my favorite of Anand's that he stopped doing and I want him to do it again is puns. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I told him, like, I, I really miss that. Yeah, I really, really so miss that. Good. Yeah. It was, it's Bring so it funny. Yeah, I know. <laughs> For this and Deep and Anand, he was doing the puns. Yes. Yeah. It was yeah. really yeah. good. Yeah. Puns and he's really super so like, punny in that sense. Yeah. He, yeah. He's really can think of something on spot. So, it, But he was consistent. Even yeah. if he would get like 10 likes per per reel, he would still post, 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 post. And he wouldn't stick to something. Um, uh, Like he was really open to the idea of trying new stuff as uh -huh. well. So, 
So uh, that's one thing. Consistency yeah. as well is is really and something relatable. Yeah. Because the way Instagram algorithm works yeah. is now it's on relatability. How many times it's shared? How many times? Yes. People watch it over and over again. Yeah. I, I recently found out that you now also get um more views if someone's watching your reel and they turn up the volume. Do you know that? Really? Yeah. Oh, I had no idea. That's a yeah. thing. Yeah. Come on. Okay. Oi, oi. okay come on. Back to your donut bed. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, yeah, because that's engagement, right? It's like, oh, I want to hear more about How it. How do you yeah. even know that? Yeah. Yeah. Everything, everything is that everything is tracked on... on right. yeah. Scary. Yeah. The other day, I had a meeting on Friday, and the, the guy was telling me that he's trying to find a cheap ticket to, I think it was Italy. And I was like, oh, I think Wizz Air goes to Italy. That's all I said. And then an hour later, I, I forgot I even had the Wizz Air app, by the way. I got a Wizz Air notification, and it was the first Wizz Air notification I've ever gotten in my life. That is insane. Like, why? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've been learning to me. Why are you listening to me? <laughs> yeah, but I, so I, sometimes I just want to whisper some things to your phone. You know? Like what? <laughs> Chanel bag. <laughs> <laughs> something else. Shopping. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> me travel. <laughs> Bring me somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, if we just wanted to know what's next for you. Like, where do you see yourself? Wait, wait, wait. Before, before we get there, I, wanna, yeah. I have one more question since we're still on the topic of comedy. Uh, do you run your jokes past your husband? or? Uh, so I used to. So sometimes I'd uh, make him, first of all, this weird thing I'm going to tell you. He doesn't like comedy. No. He doesn't like comedy. He's, he, and his reasoning is so, I don't even know what to say. It's such a weird reasoning. He's like, yeah, but your jokes are just, you know, it's common sense or it's like knowledge. And I'm just like, yeah, but that's why it's supposed to be funny. It's the funny and the money. Mm -hmm. uh, so he doesn't really like comedy. And like, if I sit there and watch like an hour special or a bit from someone, he won't join me. Um, but I do still run them by him every now and again. Okay. Sometimes he'll be like, no, don't try that. It's not funny. And I'll be like, you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll go and try it. And then I'll be like, you really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you do the opposite every time yes. he says don't do it do he it. says he there's been a few times he said it and he's right but then when he does say no this won't work don't do it and I do it I'm like <laughs> <laughs> I'm the upper hand <laughs> I'm <laughs> right <laughs> you're wrong we love that as women we love that <laughs> <laughs> when we're right as we always are oh. yeah, yeah. But what about you do you run it with Judy? no never no really only the new one-liners that I've okay. been trying to do for for every show, I run it by her a little bit. But to be honest, she she's helped me with so many tags, yeah. um, so many joke ideas that it's it's really crazy. Like I feel like like if she ever did comedy, she'd be better than me, and that would hurt me a lot. <laughs> and because she's a she's better than me in literally everything else that I do. So I'm like, don't. Aww. Don't ever do comedy because it will take it away from me. <laughs> take it away. It's like, yeah. please let me be the it's funny one. It's my one thing. <laughs> yeah, it's my one thing. It's my, really my one and thing. And so when we get into this, like, not arguments, but, you know, when we one-up each other, I'm like, if I start my comedy career and I do better than you, it's going to be the end of yeah. you. And it's like, please don't. Please don't. <laughs> like, keep like we do, we play paddle. She's she's better than me. I'm we went go-karting the other day. I was scared she was better than me, but she no, wasn't. No, was like, it? But it was yeah. so bad. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm super competitive. Okay. Yeah, yeah so okay, okay. so he knows, like, when we get into something, I'd be like, I need to be better than you. Oh. Yeah. So, so far, I can't, I can't do comedy because, again, I cannot, like, put myself up on a stage where people are just not going to laugh at me. Yeah. It will probably crush myself. Yeah. Because I feed off of people's energies. Yeah. And so if no one reacts to my joke, I'll be like, let me cry. In <laughs> you know, when, when you said feeding off people's energy, it also reminds me of you. Like whenever I know you're going to be hosting a show, I get excited because oh. Roxy is an amazing host, by the she, way. She, like her, her stage presence is crazy. I mean, I haven't seen her in person. I've only seen reels. So oh, you should see her in person. Our last gig together was last Saturday. Bite me. Yeah. At Bite me. Yeah. yeah. And it, for me, I felt it was such a tough room for one reason that 90% of the audience was uh, African. Yes, everyone was Sudanese. It was very interesting. But the way you handled it, Roxy, like I, I was just thinking like when I was standing back waiting for my turn, I'm like, if I ever host, I've only hosted like once or twice, but I'm like, how do you engage everyone in a way? Because everyone was so drawn into to Roxy. And like a, lo a lot of uh, the comedians there did, I, I mean, I said all the comedians do better, but of course, since it's a room like where, because they all came for one guy who was doing his yeah. first ever mic. 
Oh, okay. And that's also very tough, you know, when everyone comes to support one guy, so yeah. they're like, okay, let me save my laughter for my friend. Yeah. These are all competition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was it was so cool seeing you like riff the audience. You were Aww. speaking to everyone. Everyone was getting involved. You remembered everyone's names well. So it, it was really like, okay, when, when Roxy is hosting, I, even I get excited. I'm like, oh, it's going to be uh, a, a good, good night. night. Yeah. 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 I do I, think the host makes a big difference. Oh, for sure, for sure. I don't mean off me. I mean like yeah, generally, true. like yeah. I've been on times where the host is like really like monotone, and I'm like, oh no, I'm yeah. gonna have to work like extra hard as an act. Yeah, to and and I've it. seen Josh um, do at least, if not the first, at least the second act. Yeah, with a host that's not too lively or too yeah. engaging, and it really affects the crowd. Like you don't get uh, louder laughter. You don't get that, you know, energy off yeah. of people as much as if someone came in and it's like, how's everybody? And like yeah. really rise up, rouse up the audience. So yeah. that's why a lot of comedians, I don't know if you're the same, are afraid to go first. Uh, Ima puts me first all the time. Uh, and I'm like, I find it, I, I take it as a compliment. Cause yeah. it's like, Cause even then, for me, Ima yeah. only puts me first in the first two years I was doing comedy. Yeah. I was always first for, for most of Ima's yeah. shows. And everyone's like, Oh, if I'm first, does it mean I suck or yeah. they want to get me out of the way? I'm like, no, they, because they all think it goes in a progressive yeah. straight line up. But comedy is so, it's up, down, up, down, it's middle. Roller yeah. It, it's a roller coaster. <laughs> it's because everyone, all, all, like, all the newer comedians, like, uh, since I'm first, it, does it mean like the the host or the producer that doesn't think I'm yeah. very. No, no, I don't. Well, like, that. no, I don't think so. I think it's quite the yeah. opposite. I, I take it as a compliment. Yeah, I think it's it like, as a compliment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because it's like, I I'm going to bring the energy here on yeah. out. Yeah. Take it and set the tone. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's what yeah, it, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. the first act sets the tone. Yeah. So that's yeah. good. That makes yeah. sense. So you like you would never have a dark act go as number one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah. never yeah. a deadpan comedian yeah. in the in the first. Never, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. imagine they like, yeah, everyone, and then it's like, hi. You're like, thank you. Yeah. On on yeah. that, I think you should do because I've noticed like people who get away with the crowd work are people who are likable. And you're very likable. So you should do crowd work. I I, w I would love to, Honestly, but I should. I always play the crowd work game. Uh, I'm I don't know if you do this, but if someone is doing crowd work on stage and someone answers in the audience, you think of an answer what yeah. you're gonna do. Okay, he said this, but then the the uh, the guy on stage says something else. So I'm like, oh, I think if he said whatever I was thinking, it would be funnier. Mm. So I just play that game yes. for me as well. But uh, it's something that I will That's I will yeah. I will eventually start doing. I'm I'm doing improv classes now. I'm, today's my first improv class it. with uh, Rushdie. Oh. Yeah. So. Uh, Wait, how? I'm on Rushdie's show tonight. No, so he has it between four to six. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, you're on the Rushdie show tonight. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm completely unaware of what the show is, by the way. From you, what I understand, it's like they're gonna put a word or a slide, and I have to relate my joke to the word. Or oh, slide. I love that. So, that so it's. Uh, I I know a few. I've done this once with Nitesh. It's basically okay. There's a bowl. I don't know if Rushdie's gonna follow the same. It's a bowl. So this is a presentation about uh, you getting this client on board with your water purifier or something okay. then the slides will come out now you have to use that scenario with the slides okay hello guys um so like a, maybe like a shark tank sort of thing where you present something but the slides are like so there's a picture of a monkey they're like oh so monkeys are endangered because they don't drink enough water so you start doing Stuff okay. like that, so you can relate it and make it so fun. Is it? Do I do jokes as well, or I just riff off? The... No, it's so it's like an improv thing. So it's you can make it funny. Of okay. course, the audience will love it if you make it funny. Yeah. Like, why is there a picture of uh, a plant in the corner of a room? So yeah. how do you relate that to the topic that you were assigned with in the beginning? Uh... So when they used to do it, he used to ask the audience, "Okay, what is Joshua today? Uh, he's a salesman. Okay, and where does he work? Uh, he works at day to day." Okay, like, so this is Joshua's presentation for day to day and with these slides. And it was the most random slides. It was a guy drinking tea uh, in a corner. And then I'm like, okay, so how do I do it? It's, it's funny because some people really know how to make it yeah, work. work very well. Yeah. And I'll there's a lot of now. there's a lot of YouTube yeah. videos. That I think on YouTube, you can just type in PowerPoint list. Okay. And it's there's a whole comedy show that goes on like really? this. Yeah, where it's good because it trains you to be yeah. quick witted. Yeah. yeah, and then you already are with all of your crowd work, <laughs> so it's gonna be good. So you know, I'm excited. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, all right, that's that sounds cool. See, this I, is why you need to train more. Yeah, but no, it's good that you. So improv is this your first time doing improv? My first time ever. Yeah. So one thing I think as a comic is really hard when you do improv is that you want to make everything funny. That's my problem. Yes. Yeah. So I've done improv a few times with Imran, who's yeah. great at improv. 
Uh, but she always says, she's like, stop it. You're taking too long because you're trying to make it funny. Right. She's like, you shouldn't. You should just try to do the improv scene and the funny comes. And I'm like, oh, but it's so hard to that, go against. That's my yeah. thing, yeah. So I'm yeah. like, because when I see like the kings of crowd work do it, like like for me, uh, like like McDodd when he does it, yeah. like how does he make everything funny? Yeah. And uh, you as well. How do you make everything funny? How do you tie it back? How do you make a callback somewhere here or there? And I'm like, I cannot think like that on the spot. So I'm I'm doing improv, but like what you said, I, wa- I want to try to eliminate me trying to just be funny with every response yeah. that I have, but maybe dig in and into something where like, oh, that's something funny that I can work yeah. with. Because everyone, how did you meet? Oh, I met on uh, a mutual friend. Okay, where's the mutual friend? And then uh, then it comes down, like, oh, they actually met on Tinder. Then yeah, you use yeah, it. yeah against them so yeah so that's that's how you how great when i see when you do your crowd work how how, how much you thank really you. take into it yeah Josh, thank you yeah. Uh, tonight's gonna be fun yeah yeah but mine is improv class then he does the show at o'leary yeah and, and have Montana. you been have you done o'leary's before uh yeah i've okay. done it twice already is it a good yeah. crowd the first time i did it was an amazing crowd okay amazing crowd okay. yeah but then they so they have some weird things where it's a sports bar so they keep yeah. the tv on um because people will like they want to watch the the cricket match because that the first time i wasn't there but they were saying like the cricket was on and they couldn't switch it off because the whole a lot of the crowd came to watch the the match so sorry it was yeah they didn't want to be bothered by yeah yeah even last week we got so this this show was supposed to be last sunday but it got canceled because of a football match oh yeah uk was playing euro yeah yeah uh, whatever i didn't even know what there was football going on like it's out of tune i even i have i have no idea of any sports i just know because of my colleagues like everyone's talking about have you seen the match last night and i'm like "Mm, no i just feel like football is like one of the weirdest sports ever that got so commercially like it's well how many 22 guys after one ball on a pitch like how did this become this that famous? lasts for 90 minutes it it could go lo- last longer minutes? it could last longer after that how did this become a sport that, like, <laughs> i find it exciting i tried to reel him in oh, for really? the world cup and he was just like no <laughs> not happening you know funny story the first time i ever did comedy was for the comedy show where i bombed and i never wanted to do it again oh, yeah. one of my jokes i remember was because fifa was happening so i'm like let me make a joke about fifa and they made this joke. Every time I watch FIFA, I just get hungry because, uh, you know, on the sides of McDonald's the pitch, ad. there's a McDonald's <laughs> ad. I always just see the McDonald's ad. That's the only thing that I'm staring at when I watch uh, <laughs> when I watch uh, football. And no one's like, what is this guy doing here? Like, why doesn't he like football? Yeah, I know. So I'm it's like, immediately football. I made a mistake of <laughs> trying to make fun of something that literally the, there's so yeah. much passion for in, yeah. in the... And football pants. Fans are very passionate. Oh like, my god, yeah. Like how come one sport has the so makeup, much the goodness? The, yeah. yeah. Their flags, everything. They wear the jersey. Yeah. That's yeah. insane. But that's one thing I don't like about football, actually. I feel like it brings up a really bad patriotic mm. side out of some people. Mm. It's yeah. like, and they get not, very rowdy. Yeah. Very yeah the amount of generally. like after match fights. But yes. <laughs> it's and that's like just for like team, like team, whatever. But like exactly. the World Cup, people go crazy. I was just like Because this we're talking about a country. <laughs> A country versus yeah. another. Yeah. <laughs> it gets insane. Yeah. yeah. People like, like she, she gets excited for Brazil. I'm like, well, you have no ties to Brazil <laughs> whatsoever. I'm Lebanese. What are you saying? What? <laughs> oh, that's true. There's so many Lebanese people yeah. in Brazil. Oh, are Half you? of it is like full Lebanese. of them. Oh, okay. Brazil, uh, with, uh, with Colombia, obviously, yes. and then Chile? Yes. Chile, like, Palestinians. Uh, yes. South America, like, yeah. a lot of Oh, okay. That I had no idea. I really want to read on the history of what happened at one point. That Lebanese... Have you seen the map? Like, how did these people get... Right? <laughs> From there to there. Yeah. It wasn't even a trade route. I don't yeah. understand what went wrong on yeah. this boat trip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're Guys, relax. We're going east. I know, okay? <laughs> There's a storm. So that's <laughs> Beirut, guys. Relax. <laughs> the stars? <laughs> <laughs> Probably that's what happened. Yeah. It just got lost. Yeah. <laughs> But it's interesting. It's like, uh, yeah, I want to hear. And this is why I'm very passionate about Brazil. Okay, that I had no idea too yeah. then. I but. grew up cheering as a family. Yeah. Grew up cheering for the Brazil team. Mm. I don't know why. I was just like, yeah, Brazil. Was your mom in the room when you were cheering? Yeah, yeah. She's sugarcoating it. It's because Brazilian men are hot, Josh. Yeah. I don't know how she to tell me. I, I, after that, she's like, isn't Neymar so good looking? I'm like, what are, what are you watching? <laughs> it's like, no. Bro, that's no, why women no. like football. It's because exactly. all the men have phenomenal legs. I'm just like, this is the only sport where uh, that, that, I can, yeah, that I can. And the see. swag is insane. Yeah. 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 And the, the swag. Yeah. yeah. 
I'm gonna go back to my question. Yeah, go back. <laughs> yeah, what's what's to come from you? What's gonna happen in the next few with comedy? Days? Yeah. Or even yeah, in, in general, like what is what are your aspirations? Is this an interview? But I know. <gasps> oh, where's my five? <laughs> Does it bring in a flash by sales company? <laughs> <laughs> Skynet point two. In Dubai. Can I work for you guys? I, I know Emirates NBD Visa card starts at four four three nine. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm the Sri Lankan in this story. <laughs> So, uh, I mean, I guess every, like, comedian or, like, performer's goal is, like, hopefully tour and stuff. And I'd love to. So, my plan is, like, by the end of the year, I want to go and tour India for two weeks. So, I'm going to. in India, right? Like, where, were you well-received yeah. over there? Oh, I loved it. I think but, yeah, very well-received. I got very lucky because I think I've got an edge because I'm married to an Indian. Right, so it's right, kind of, right. like, an outward person's, uh, I guess, experience with their culture. Just to add to that, plus... Plus, Indian men love seeing when an Indian man eventually ends up with a white girl. <laughs> and you're, we did you're, it. you're white at first sight. Passing, so when yeah, they see an Indian guy, like, they sure. all get so curious. I'm like, so, okay, so what is what is the steps now to marry a white girl? <laughs> what does he have? Because Indian men are obsessed with white girls. So it's like, it's so, so then they, true. so you have already have that edge. Yeah. So you were well received that they, they liked Very it. Very well received. I really enjoyed it. The crowds were so good. Like, honestly, yeah. like, Mumbai, if, if you can, mm -hmm. go to Mumbai and do a show. Okay. Like, honestly, the crowd was smart. They were very perceptive. Uh, I really enjoyed it. And I've heard like Bangalore is even better than that. So oh, nice. I got in touch with, I met like a lot of comics there. And like, I asked one of them if I want to, he, he gave me the name of a company. He's like, reach out to them. They can even set it up for you. Oh, okay. So yes, short term goal is to, to put myself through like one. Also that like, you're tours. thinking about like a tour tour, like you're the headliner, you oh, have no, 30 minutes set, or just doing like, spots. Just get spots. Oh, okay. Just get spots in like some of the main cities. So I think from what I understand about India, it'll probably be Bangalore, uh, Mumbai and Delhi. Delhi. Um, so yeah, these, these three do that. And then hopefully next year, try and put myself through the UK. Nice. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's the, goal. that's the goal. Very nice. Yeah, that's Very the goal. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to plug the podcast that you have? Anything that you want to... With Sonia. Yeah. Sure. I mean, and Spicy Baby. Yes. Please yes. watch it. <laughs> On YouTube. Is it a weekly podcast? So we've that? got a bunch of backlog right now because Sonia's been touring. Oh, yeah, correct. Uh, so we're, we're hopefully we'll have a new episode. I think before she was touring, we had a new episode every like uh, two weeks. Yeah. You were telling me she does everything, right? She edits. She, she does, does everything. Yeah. yeah that's it's, crazy. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So we're trying to find someone to do it on her behalf now because okay. it's, it's too much work like yeah. for her. Especially if she's touring. She's touring and she's got a full-time job. So yeah. it's like, uh, it's it's a lot of work. And the yeah. three of you are all comics? If so no, me and, me and Sonia are comics. Z is uh, Sonia's uh, cousin. Ah. Yeah. Oh, that was her sister. Oh, yeah, no, her cousin. Her, okay. her, uh, her yeah. 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 Very cool. Yeah. 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 Very cool. I should listen to you. But I'm so glad of the, the female comedian community right now. Because yeah, when I started, so it was just Ima, uh, Sahar. Liz. Liz. Yeah. Yeah, that's literally it. And all the other girls, like Arzu, they left. Um, was Rebecca there back then? Uh, Rebecca's there, yeah. Rebecca there, okay. Yeah, Rebecca was there. But now it's coming in hot. Yeah. Like, the girls are, are really... booming, the girls. Yeah. yeah. The other day, on Thursday, uh, Noha, Noha's room at Underground, it's literally, I think, five of us and Esan. I'm like, I oh, yeah, 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 that yeah, Esan is our, oh. our P&I yeah. quota <laughs> for the evening. It's great. And now there's three Iranian comedians. Before, oh, yeah, that's true. Zilch. True, true, true. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's good. So it's it's, it's really picking up here yeah. the the scene like yeah. from when I started till now. It's you guys need yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. You've been doing it for two years now, George. Twenty eighteen, I started. First time I ever got on stage was twenty eighteen. Uh, I'll you tell you the you story. Took a break. Yeah, uh, you said you took a break. Took a break. Uh, and when I was working, uh, I mean, when I was working out my set, it was I was doing the same set for like two years. No, yeah. no new jokes, no new nothing. Now I'm coming in a little bit hotter. Yeah. Um. Uh, and yeah, like I started 2018. It was the first time I ever got on yeah. stage, but I stopped. I'll, I'll tell you this off camera because sure. I, 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 I'm, I've spoken about this so many times. But, but yeah, it's it's been a it's I I just love seeing how much it's progressing, and it and it's also a wake up call to everyone to really be at their toes if they really want to make it big into Bring comedy. Bring a game, yeah. yeah. Well, keep working on new jokes, yeah, so that I can come and keep watching you guys, yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank, thank you for yeah. being yeah. here. Well, when are you performing next? I don't know. So this podcast comes out on Tuesday. Do you have any shows past Tuesday um, that you want to plug in? Yes, I'm hosting this week. So Thursday, Underground in uh, Marina. Mm -hmm. 
Friday hosting blah blah in JBR, and Saturday bite me. Okay. In okay. okay. Awesome. Yes. And then hopefully next week or onwards, just performing. Okay. We'll take a break from hosting because I was trying to host for a while so that I can write new material. Oh, okay. How, yeah. How's the writing going? It's going good. It's yeah. going good. So I did a bunch of it last week at Natasha's room and now, yeah. Okay, that's good. What's, uh, before we close, I always like to ask a comedian, whoever we have as a guest, what is your writing process? Do you write word for word? Do you write, you have an idea, you just make thought bubbles around it or? Uh, so I would write the title of the joke, so like okay. the premise. So let's say my British Iranian one, that's always okay. the title and then I'll write jokes and then I'll probably... I'll write the joke format and then I'll probably rewrite it three times before I even test it. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. usually, I, I would, I like the idea of thought bubbles. So now that you said mm. that, I'm like, oh, I like that. Because <laughs> what I'm starting now is doing like, um, what is the word? Mind mapping. So I write, Ooh. um, so I like, if I want to do a joke about the gym, so I put gym in the center and I put on one side, okay, uh, smelly people, um, towels on the floor. Yeah. So I just put everything, all this, because you have to look at it at different angles because, yeah. But like what you said again, everyone will have a similar joke when it comes to something topical, like yeah. the the Stephen Hawking bit. Yeah. So you have to think of so an angle which no one can really think about, and then try to do it. Because uh, ev eventually, if everyone has the same premise, like mm -hmm. a Tinder joke, everyone almost has a Tinder joke. Yeah. So a same punchline or something will be in the middle. So you have to just try to think of a different angle out of it. Yeah. I like that. That's a good. Yeah. Uh, and you have a unique story as well. So. Uh, as an advice, try to make it per start making it personal. Like That's the what, yeah, this is what like the call center yeah. thing is 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 really yeah. really funny. Like you see my new bit now, which I'm still workshopping about me growing up poor. Yeah, that's all completely real. Of yeah. course, exaggerated, yeah. but um, I love that joke. Yeah, the yeah. Way I keep so going, I love that. Joke. So that's the yeah. thing. I think if you start making it more personal, that's when you can really yeah. tour like a solid forty five minutes and yeah. do that around. Yeah, so. yeah. So yeah. that's what I'm trying now. Yeah. So exciting! I can't wait to see you live. So much. Thank yeah, let's let's try to we'll try yeah. to get you on. Because the thing is, we have Max, and he's separate. He has crazy separation anxiety. Janine will show you a video after this. She's been showing everyone this video of how he is when he's home alone. Oh no! Yeah. So um, I want to get a spot at Reform actually, because it's the only dog friendly venue. Oh yes, yes, it is. yeah. So Janine, last time, one of the last few times you saw me was at Reform. Yeah. So I'll try to get a spot at Reform. So that's the only way that she can come. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hopefully oh, we do need some more pet friendly venues, huh? Yeah. <laughs> we do. Yeah, yeah. Really Producers, need. we do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much All for right. your time. Thank you, Thank, you Thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate Thank it. You. We would love to have you back sometime again in the future. And I'd love to see you there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys Thanks, for listening. Guys. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Thanks, guys. That was, that was a lot of fun. That was fun.